everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mike Likes. I'm Mike, and today I thought I'd show you the smallest telescope I own. This is an AT60ED uh, Apo Refractor. It's a tiny telescope. It's 60 millimeters, which is well under three inches of aperture. It weighs 3.25 pounds and it is tiny. And just to show you, because telescopes often uh, look smaller than they are, this is a Sharpie and this is the telescope. And I mean, that is small. This telescope is, what, nine inches maybe when collapsed? And I'm just gonna bring the dew shield out here so we're not, you know, trying to hide the obvious, but take that off there. Extend our dew shield all the way. That's it. It's a 12 inch telescope. Why is that important? Well, telescopes get big. I mean, I don't have to tell you, that's a 10 inch Dobsonian over there. And guess what? That 10 inch Dobsonian does not fly on Delta or United. This goes anywhere I go in my carry on luggage. And just to give you another idea for size comparison, this is a full frame Sony Tamron camera lens. It's a 28 to 200 and it's not all that much bigger than that. And if I extend it all the way to 200, because you know, I wanna kind of match that, you can see that the actual optical tube of it is hardly bigger than a full frame camera lens, which it's just such a cool thing because the conventional wisdom is that larger gets used less than astronomy. Now, I kind of cheat because my largest scope, uh, which is this 10 inch daub over here, it has, wheels underneath, uh, little roller blades uh, wheels. So I use my 10 inch quite a bit, but when I'm traveling or I'm going somewhere far away in an airplane or even in a car where space is a premium, I need a small telescope. So Astronomics, which is a company I believe out in Kansas, they sell this telescope. It's a refractor. So refractor telescope is the classic telescope. When you think of a pirate on the bridge of a ship looking at some far off landmass, that's probably a refractor that he's holding that collapses in and out. So this is, you know, a lens and optics type telescope. Um, you know, the closest thing to visuals. Here's the front aperture of it. You can see it's got FPL 53 ED uh, glass, so extra dispersion. And that really gets rid of any, you know, purple fringing, chromatic aberration, that sort of thing. And the cost of this telescope just blows me away. 370 bucks new. And I see them used all the time for 300 bucks, sometimes 280, just depends where you're shopping. I mean, that's an incredible bargain. And it's a wide field scope. So uh, my C8, 2000 millimeters of focal length. My 10 inch dog over there, 1200 millimeters. This is 360 millimeters. That is wide field. That means that something like Orion's belt with a, with a nice wide eyepiece will fit in the field of view. The entire Pleiades will fit in the field of view. It creates such a pleasing image because a lot of the things up there are quite big. Andromeda Galaxy is one of them. That is very, very valuable when you're, you know, used to 2000 millimeters of focal length, 1200 millimeters of focal length. Yeah, if you want the full moon to fill up your eyepiece uh, and see every little crater, you might want a C8 with 2000 millimeters. But if you want to look at things in a more general way, 360 millimeters, that's a nice wide field, makes it great for astrophotography, makes it great for visual of uh, big stuff, but also keeps that size down, keeps the, the bulk down. Um, I'm just continuously impressed with the, of the views I get out of this telescope. You know, refractor owners, they like to say, oh, the stars, they look like diamonds on black velvet. And, you know, a dog owner will say, yeah, well, I get diffraction spikes. And, and the SCT owner will say, yeah, well, I see deeper than most of you because I'm over at 2,800 millimeters. Well, stars in a refractor look as pretty as they can possibly be. And I'm not biased. I'm just saying that from owning all three major types of telescopes. I have an SCT. I have the reflector. I've got this refractor. The refractor in the star test, it wins. And that's why people like big, heavy refractors. This is everything that's not. It's a doublet refractor. So it's not a triplet design, it's a doublet, but that's what's giving you that magical three pounds. It's all about the size on this telescope. What's nice is that Astronomics, uh, they make a flattener, which brings it to a 41 millimeter circle, which means a full frame camera. You can connect it here. You can see that I've got a 1.25 inch 
diagonal on here, but you can easily connect the camera to it if you like. Um, the fit and finish is beautiful. I'm just gonna take these caps off here. This is your focuser. It's a dual speed focuser. You've got your fine focus. You've got your course right there, and it extends out just like that to fine focus. On the other side of it, you've got plenty of room to put a shoe over here, over here on both. You can put a finder if you want. Um, you know, and it's got room for accessories considering how small it is. The quality of the accessories are really nice. Even the cap, the, the, the telescope's cap, it's, it's made of metal, which at a $300 price point you don't find. Now, I know what you're saying. This is a doublet refractor made in China, you know, Apo style, but not necessarily, not necessarily verified. William Optics makes one like it. Astronomics makes the AT72. They're all made by the same factories in China, but man, the fit and finish you get out of this is just beautiful engineering. It's smooth. There's like it a... feels finer than the Focuser on my Dobsonian, for example. It feels more confident than the Focuser on my C8. It's a really quality piece of optic. As you can see, it's got this shoe, and the shoe is just using your standard screw that a tripod uses for a camera. Case in point, I use this tripod quite a bit, and this is what I often travel with. This tripod is maybe three pounds total, and I travel with it, and it's light, and it goes with a telescope, and I can put that in a camera bag, and if I go to Arizona, high desert, wherever I'm going, I can view that way. That's really cool and valuable, because I'm not bringing a 50-pound daub on a plane. I'm not bringing a 45-pound C8 rig on a plane, but I can bring this little guy, and it does great. My big plans for this telescope in the future are to do a Messier marathon. For those of you who don't know, Charles Messier was a French astronomer. He lived, I want to say about 400 years ago, and he observed from what's now downtown Paris at a hotel on the balcony, about 110 Messier objects. It was, it, was a, it was a shorter list when he was alive, but it got somewhat expanded. And these Messier objects are the common things you find in the sky. He was looking for comets, but instead he found Messier objects. So my soft goal is to observe all of them with this telescope. People have done it with scopes as small as 50, 55 millimeters. This is a 60 millimeter. By my thoughts, if I get a dark enough sky, I have Bortle 4 access pretty easily. Bortle 3, Bortle 2 is a tighter uh, thing to ask for, but I'm pretty confident I can get most of them. I do have some doubts. I mean, this is only 60 millimeters of aperture. You're not even talking about three inches there. You know, M41, M74, M91, those are tough ones to get, even in a larger telescope. But I'm confident if my skies are dark enough, my technique's good enough, I stay up late enough, I can hopefully get those and have a really fun video for you guys if I do. Um, you know, my sketching, my imaging is, is not, you know, paramount here. I'm just going to see if I can get them, but that'll be exciting to do. Other things that look great in this telescope, the planets, the moon, they look fantastic. It's just a question of getting the right eyepiece. I usually use my 8 to 24 zoom. I have a 5.5 millimeter, which gives a nice amount of magnification. These kinds of telescopes at 360 millimeters, a Barlow can be very useful for planetary observations. But for deep sky, the Pleiades, Andromeda, Orion Nebula, the big ones, they look beautiful in a telescope like this. So if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts, I should say, about getting an AT60 as your grab and go tiny scope, one that fits on, you know, this little alt as mount that's normally for a Celestron C5, or this tripod that I normally just put my Sony camera on that weighs just a couple of pounds, you've got a five or six pound telescope solution that can show you a ton up there and not break the bank. I mean, you're talking 300 and change. That is not a lot of money. And there's not a lot of drawbacks to this telescope other than what you see right here is that it's a small scope. 60 millimeters is not 100 millimeters. It's certainly not 300 millimeters, but it's light. It's not gonna break your back or the bank. It's fun to use. It just oozes quality. It feels solid. You know, you've got your built-in dew shield. You've got your metal accessory caps and everything. You can put a two inch diagonal in here to use all your two inch eyepieces or your full frame cameras, your astronomy cameras, and it's just that much fun to use. They're readily in stock. I think it's a great buy if you need portability with your scope. It's something that cannot be, you know, discounted because large telescopes, they only go in cars. And if you're going to fly cross country, that's not going to work. So you might need something smaller. I have this telescope on this little L bracket because it's a camera mount, but you can put it on a Vixen plate if you want to. Um, totally just screw that 
um, standard tripod screw into a Vixen plate, and then this will mount to your equatorial mount for astro imaging, or to an Altaz mount like I've got it here, or to just a dumb photo tripod as another option. So I hope you guys have liked this review of the AT60. I strongly recommend this refractor and its uh, big brother, the AT72 and the AT80, and they go all the way up from there. They're really good telescopes, and they don't break the bank, and they feel as good to use as any of the super expensive ones, obviously, you know, it's, it's, uh, you get your money's worth with this kind of telescope. And if you guys like the video, please throw a like, subscribe to the channel, it's awesome. I love making these videos for you. And I'm wishing you all a happy new year, clear skies, and have a great day.